So now let's quickly get into how it works uh, for VMware and then we'll get to the demo, right? Um, so the way it works for VMware is we use the standard APIs just like everyone else. VADP integration, we are agentless, and of course if the VMs have databases, we have the option of leveraging agents as well, which we call as connectors. Um, and yes, we do incremental forever with a point in time virtual full. So the way it works is, after the first full, it's always gonna do incrementals. But the moment an incremental backup hap you know, ingestion happens, we will synthesize the virtual full right away. Now, there are some vendors which will do that, but the real differentiation is that people can go back, that RPO dial, go back to any point in time and spin up multiple virtual copies of that virtual machine for many different use cases. So it's not just like one VM coming up on a dedupe pool. This is, uh, this is multiple virtual copies of any virtual machine in a point in time coming up on a really scalable and rewritable storage. Right? So you, that could be any storage behind. And the reason why we do that is because we store the data in its native format. Um, so, so that was how you know, it, uh, it works for VMware. I mentioned, so this is great. A single VM recovery is, is very, very simple. What if you have 1,000 virtual machines? I mentioned earlier about ActiveView Resiliency Director. So this is how it works. So what it does is, ActiveView Resiliency Director, it collects all the metadata for virtual machines. The key metadata for any virtual machine is, what's the vCPU, how much memory, uh, what's the VLAN port group, how many vNICs, what's the IP address for each, <coughs> and what's the DNS server, right? So basic information, we collect that metadata for all of them, and we store that metadata on the DR side. And then what happens is we have a web-based interface which leverages that metadata and shows a nice interface to end users. Now what the end users can do is get rid of the spreadsheets and whatever they were storing in the spreadsheet, if you open up a DR plan in a spreadsheet, this is exactly how it would look like. All the columns there are columns in spreadsheet and the rows are the VMs. So for those VMs, you know, how much CPU and memory do you want it on the DR side? Or what's the VLAN um, port group do you want? What's the IP address? What's the DNS service? And between the VM recovery, you might also want to inject some scripts. Like for example, I want the virtual firewall to be instantiated on some Juniper NetScreen firewall as an example, right? Uh, another example is I want to do the DNS redirection, external DNS redirection before my web facing application comes up on the DR side. So all of that can be controlled by the postscripts. And what we Actifio will do is that invoke the postscripts at the right pre and postscripts at the right time and then orchestrate the recovery of all these virtual machines, right? So what this allows, really allows you is that once you create these DR plans and save them, one click push button disaster recovery are fully orchestrated. And more importantly, you know, production keeps changing. People might add more app servers uh, or maybe a new application came up or maybe they changed another, they added a new virtual NIC or changed uh, CPU or memory in a virtual machine. What RD also does is it keeps track of what is changing in the production from a metadata standpoint and notifies a DR operator on the DR side that, hey, something changed so they can go back and adjust their DR plans. Now, it, the story doesn't stop there. What, what you could also do is, instead of, why do, you, why do you have to do DR test once a year or twice a year? Why not every week? So pick your mission critical application out of those 1,000 virtual machines, maybe it's 10 VMs. You could actually schedule an automated um, uh, disaster recovery testing um, every Sunday, 3 a.m., the VMs would come up, and in a postscript, you could literally do a DBCC checksum on the database, or you could run a multi-tier transaction, actual transaction, because this is all rewritable, um, and then spin, off, spin up and spin down automatically. No human being involved, everything automated. So that's what Active Your Resiliency Director can do. So, if you have any so, questions? So is it, simple, is it as simple as my saying in data center A, VLAN 7's root was 172.17.1.0 slash 24, and in B, it's 172.18.1.24. Adjust all the IP addresses in that VLAN as you bring those machines up, or do I have to specify new IP addresses? You, you have options for both. You can specify, for every VM, you can change the IP address in port group, or you can also have uh, apply all for, for VLAN port groups. Okay, and, and can I do that? differently for the disaster recovery test when I want it all routable and, excuse me, for the disaster recovery when I want it all routable and for the test when I don't want it routable because I'm bringing up a second exchange server with the same name and if the two of them see each other, I'm a dead man. I believe you can save you can. multiple DR plans. For Absolutely, this. and you can change which, which, um, <laughs> you know, which uh, virtual network you want to put the machines on, whether it's a bubble network or whether it's a real production network. Okay. And so. while you're doing the DR test, there's no impact on production. So is this an SRM 
replacement. replacement. Yeah. yeah. But the advantage is you can integrate with SQL Oracle natively. That's correct. As well. That's correct. And, we, and when we replicate the data, we're doing it globally, deduplicated, and compressed as a part of everything else that we do. Okay. Yeah. But you're now primary data. This is not secondary data when you're using it for DR, because when I'm failed over, it's my primary. That is correct. Once you fail over it? For, for a period of time. And then you can storage vMotion, the running virtual machines, right, off of the Actifio environment onto the you know, EMC, peer storage, whatever your, your production right. system is. And do you handle consistency between a virtual machine and a database? Or, or between a group or of virtual, a group machines. Of virtual machines? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can do groups and, and consistency groups. So depending on you set up schedules, you can do um, you know, snapshots at the same time on multiple virtual machines. You can do quiesce applications and then run batch jobs and then unquiesce, things like that, depending on what so, you want to do. So if I'm running off the snapshot pool in the DR site, are you in line at that point? At that point, yes. We have, we have, uh, two, we have two architectures yeah. there. We have two choices, right, what we call as a ready VM and ready volume internally. Um, so y you could choose to have the in transactions in line after the recovery. Or you could also choose to not have the transactions in line. We have both the architectures. Okay. Because in line, now you become the, the performance for the brief, limitation. Yes, but for the brief duration, yeah. So that's why what we recommend well, our that, customers. That, yeah, you say brief duration, but having lived through that, brief yeah. is weeks, not minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I hear you. I delivered services for three years on uh, oh, yeah. no, right. services. I right. hear you. Right, and, and, you know, and if, if, if that snapshot pool is a VNX, yeah. then, and it's nat in native format, yeah. then I don't want you in band any more than you have to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we uh, recommend our customers is hear your applications, know what kind of IOPS are happening on different databases, and with Actifio, you can have multiple snap pools on primary and DR side. So <laughs> pick your snap pool. Put one snap pool for that uh, SQL database with 10,000 IOPS per terabyte, put it on a flash storage. For the rest of them, put the snap pool on some other storage. So customers have the flexibility on where they want to create the snap pool. And again, you can storage vMotion to use the VMware you know, uh, version of that. The running virtual machine to off of Actifio back onto whatever infrastructure you like while your application is already back up and, and running. Yeah, I can. Yeah, that seems like another copy. Well, it, yeah. it, it's... But you, you're going to have to get off, off what's essentially a secondary storage array to a primary. The, the problem is that uh, storage you, I mean, uh, isn't Eventually, you have to get off your DR site because you don't have a DR site when you're on your DR site. Yeah. Um, but the, the problem with the whole just storage vMotion it argument is the reason I want to get off of this is because it's undersized because it was just my DR site and storage vMotioning increases the load on it. So it, you're painted in the corner. Yeah, one important distinction, when, we, when you use um, Actifio to recover, let's say, 1,000 virtual machines or 100 virtual machines on the DR side, is one thing which we are very different from everyone else is that the moment those VMs come up, remember the diagram where you had the DDU pool and the snap pool on the DR side as well? The moment the data protection starts, we already see all those blocks that existed there. So the next backup on the DR side is so fast, it's right there because all the blocks exist. The deduplication is very efficient. And then eventually, when you want to fail back, again, if, if, the, if we even see part of the DDU pool there on the primary side, we are smart enough to detect and replicate only the blocks that are different between the DDU pools on both sides. So I do want to move through this relatively quickly because we do have a lot, a lot more we'd like to show you. So this is our, our product called Resiliency Director. This is exactly what China just talked about. It's for orchestrating, uh, executing DR plans, using Actifio technology to move the data between sites. And there's really just kind of two main, uh, main areas. There's what we call application groups. Application groups are just, just that, groups of different VMs. You might have uh, you know, core stuff like uh, DNS servers, infrastructure servers. You might have um, an application tier. Refresh this here. Look, it really is a live demo. Yeah, exactly. Oh, this is all live. <laughs> yeah, how did that end for our last live demo, people? <laughs> yeah. Anyways. If it worked perfectly, we would suspect it was real. That's recording. right. This is, this, is how you, this is how you know it's real. Anyways, I'm not sure what's, maybe I shouldn't be using this version of Chrome or something, but um, this is the application group. It's going to show you which list of applications there are. Then there's a recovery plan. <laughs> there we go. I'm not sure why it's not painting. Um, the recovery plan, I'll just edit this one that we already have here. This is going to basically take the different uh, groups that you have. We have an application group called Demo App Group 1. A uh, recovery plan has got those resources that Chandra mentioned, right? You can decide which, which networks you're going to put these on, right? Which resource pools you're going to use. Lots of different overrides, and, and including these pre and post scripts that you can select uh, for, you know, based on what you want to do. Maybe you want to run a pre and a post script, 
after you bring up the court, uh, DNS servers or load balancers, you want to run some scripts on some other things, change some IP addresses. It's really got all of the um, all the bells and whistles built right in, including uh, the ability to run this on a schedule as an automated job to do that automated DR test. Um, so let's just go ahead and kick this off in the interest of time. I'm going to click on Run Now. And so it's going to want... It's going to ask me, what do I want to do? I want to do a test. I don't want to do an actual fail over here. I want to do a test. So I'm going to type in recover. And it says right here, in progress. And what I've pulled up in the meantime is um, the VMware environment at that DR site. I kind of put my windows here side by side. And what you're going to see is, I know it's kind of an eye chart, but you can see the... Um, the VMware activity is going on. What we're doing right now is we are taking those application groups, in this case, I think it's just three VMs in, in two, uh, two segments. We are presenting uh, the, the block devices to the to Kro ESX servers at the DR site. We are creating virtual machines that point to that data. We're, we are um, you know, registering uh, virtual machines, all that good stuff that needs to happen to make the, the VMs actually show up and be usable. Once that's done for the first group, we're gonna power them on, or actually we're gonna move them there you go. You can see we just moved these two VMs. I know it's kind of hard to see. There we go. I can kind of zoom in here. Um, these VMs weren't there before. We just moved them and powered them on automatically as a part of this recovery plan. And then once that's done, we're going to bring in the third VM. That one's going to have an IP address change, um, so it's going to run in the background. But the point is, is to, to Chandra's point, this replaces that spreadsheet with a test that can be run with a single click, and more importantly, be tested with a single click as well. So I do want to keep it moving because we do have a lot more we, we want to try to fit in here in the last 40 minutes or so. Any, any questions on Resiliency Director or VMware before we move on? Failback is as simple as, obviously, if you're going to fail over, are those then change blocks replicated automatically back to primary so you can fail over it is. So we have a, a, a concept called sync back. So as Chandra said, we know which blocks have changed on the DR site uh, as you fail over. So let's say you fail over for a week or so, we know which blocks have changed. There's a, a button you press called sync back that will take the change blocks only, uh, dedupe them, compress them, send them back the other way. You can take equal, each one of those images and bring them up. Say, is that consistent? Is that good? Nope. Do it again. Let me do something on the database. Sync back again, sync back again, sync back again, and then, then cut over when you're ready to go. So it's a way to keep those change blocks up to date back in the other direction and be able to very granularly fail back over uh, individual VMs or multiple VMs. And you the orchestration with uh, vCenter as well that it adds the, the VMs back into the original place in, in vCenter? Uh, no, you, you would pick at the time because, again, we don't assume that that environment still exists. It might be a net new environment. So when you go to do the, take the sync back image and put it back, it'll ask you what data store you want to put it in. That makes sense. Are you using CBT somewhere in the process? Yes, we're leveraging CBT throughout all this. So we're using the, the VMware VADP APIs that give us the, the CBT as well as the, the application consistent snapshots for these images. So it's if only those APIs throughout. weren't buggy. Oh, yeah. 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 Next time, I was pretty good. Uh, there's, no. You, oh, there's didn't, you didn't see last week's <laughs> announcement. Before last week. <laughs> that was the second one in six. I thought the first third one was, anyway. Third the one. third one in six? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say I couldn't help but notice that the environment was 5.5. <laughs> <laughs> that's just uh, it's, yeah. If it ain't broke, that's right. Yeah. yeah, it's it's really sad. CBT is is such a brilliant concept, and they just keep yeah. not doing the QA on it properly. 